YouTube Vinyl Community, Turtles fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins. We're here today to talk about the Turtles' more golden hits released in 1970. The Turtles are one of the most underrated bands of the 60s. They're one of those bands that were too smart for their own good. They were extremely talented. They wrote a lot of their own stuff. Their vocals were absolutely from the heavens. They're a band that deserves way more recognition. And this album is strange and peculiar and fascinating and amazing kind of all wrapped up in one package it's a collection of singles at the time non-album tracks uh an unreleased song and some absolutely massive hits the album cover was designed by dean torrance which is pretty cool and um this isn't their officially last album wooden head came out after this which was a collection of unreleased stuff at that time but this kind of count comes as the second part of the Golden Hits album from 1967. So it's meant to be a Greatest Hits album part two, even though not all of them are kind of hits and it's, it's missing some singles that were released at this time. The late 60s for the Turtles were kind of a rough period. Um, you know, after the golden era of 1967, where you got, you know, She'd Rather Be With Me and Happy Together and all these songs, things changed a little bit for the music scene and for the Turtles themselves. A couple of guys left, Johnny Barbada left, the other yeah, drummer, amazing drummer left, I think in 1968 or early 69. And so things were kind of moving around here, but I mean, most of the guys were still there, like Flo and Eddie, uh, of course, were always there. But this album for me, I love it because it's such an eclectic mix of tracks. You've got songs they didn't want to do, like Who Would Ever Think That I Would Marry Margaret, um, gorgeous tracks like Lady O, the acoustic song that Judy still wrote, or still. Um, and then some of the stuff they did for the Turtle Soup album that Ray Davies produced. It was the first time he ever produced an album for a band that wasn't his own. So, I mean, you got some top-notch stuff on here. And let's just jump right into this because the first track on here, We Ain't Gonna Party No More, was written by Howard Kalen. Uh, and it was released as the B-side of Who Would Ever Think That I Would Marry Margaret in 1970. Which, we'll get to that song later on, but this track in particular for me feels very much like the Ray Davies song that it is. Um, really clean production, I like the, uh, the harpsichord on the verses, but it definitely sounds like a Ray Davies track. Especially with like, the chanting in the middle, you know, about not going to war and all that. The, it's a really euphoric sort of chorus, but you can't believe these, these are the same guys that only two years earlier sing Happy Together. It's a whole different world. Like, so much had changed in the 60s, and the Turtles kind of reflected that. But I love it. I love that. Story of Rock and Roll. Very excellent sort of Motown piano on this one. And I love Howard's lead vocal. The chord change changes on this, again, are nice and warm. Um, euphoric celebration of rock and roll. And this track in particular was written by Harry Nilsson. Yeah, that guy. Hit number 48 in 1968 on the uh, Billboard US 200. And you get to You Showed Me, which comes off of the Battle of the Bands album. And originally written by Roger Clark and uh, Jim McGuinn as a much different type of track. But this was like their last big hit. This was their last top ten hit. It was a number six hit. It peaked on July 29th, 1969. And, I mean, You Showed Me is such a cool song. It's warm. It's vibey. It's spacey. That Moog synthesizer on it is fantastic. It's just a sly, cool, slinky type of warm song. But beautiful harmonies gently layered all over this thing. Easy to digest lyrics, which is always good for the record buying public. If you can instantly relate to a song, it's going to be a hit. If you have to dig deep and kind of figure it out these days, good luck. Um, but yeah, it's an excellent pop song. It's like a perfect idea of what a pop song could be. Sound Asleep. This song is really cool. I love the horns on this one. Very Buckingham's kind of feel on this one. And the claves, I think, are great. Uh, but it's got the, the buoyancy and the bounce and the joyful, youthful energy of their earlier tracks. Um, kind of chill at times, but I really dig this track. You know, it, not exactly a number one, but it's still a really great song. Number five on here, You Don't Have to Walk in the Rain. This is one of my favorite songs on the album, and this track in particular was a number 51 hit off of Turtle Soup in 1969, written by the guys. Um, this should have been a, a bigger hit. I think if it was better marketed and... I mean, White Whale at this time, they were having so many problems with their record company, uh, which is one of the reasons why they ended up leaving, and then a couple years later, because the Turtles were their biggest group, White Whale folded, but... 
um, you know, they were due a lot of royalties and contracts, and they wanted to own more of their songs and do their own stuff, but they were kind of forced to do some of the tracks they didn't want to do. But man, this song could have been something else. I mean, the, the overall construction of this thing is a super memorable song. It, it really deserves to be more well-known. So You Don't Have to Walk in the Rain is the track I really highly recommend. And then Who Would Ever Think That I Would Marry Margaret? I mean, it's a good song. They were forced to do it. Uh, it, I think it's just Flo and Eddie vocally on this one because none of the guys play on it, but it didn't chart. It came out in 1970 and it did absolutely nothing, but White Whale thought it was a good idea. Um, you know, it was an obligation track and in moments it kind of feels like it, but even for being obligated to do this track, it still sounds like a good song. I mean, they have disowned it since, but I think if anybody else had done it and put it out under a different name, it would have been a good hit. Um... It's kind of a fun, folky song, you know, a little bit of a country vibe to it, but it's really not bad. Um, I've heard worse. Side 2 opens up with, with She's My Girl, and oh my god, this song is so good. A number 14 hit in 1967. Um, this song is so magical. It's just from the stars. It's got this quiet verse thing that they were known for, especially like Unhappy Together. The tension building is dramatic and explosive. The arrangement with the strings adds some really good texture to the song. The whole thing is a trip. I mean, it's just a fantastic song. And there's a great video for it on YouTube. Check out the video. But yeah, She's My Girl. Excellent. Track two, Eleanor. I mean, what more can be said about this one? It's a classic from the Battle of the Bands album. They wrote it as a joke. Um, you know, the record company was like, write another Happy Together. So they wrote Happy Together backwards, and this is what they came up with. It's incredible. It's one of the most well-known songs they ever did. It's magic in a bottle from start to finish. It's it's the idea of what you'd want to write in a song that will always be popular and always be something fun to sing along to. They nailed it. They absolutely nailed that magic. Lady O. I'm pretty sure Judy still say, uh, plays the guitar on this one. This did hit number 78. It was their last charting single in 1969. Um, definitely kind of a as tears go by feel to this one, but Howard's gentle vocal is absolutely magnetic. It's such a great little track. Um, just a warm, comfortable, put a sweater on type of feel of a track. I love it. it it's, it's something that really needs to be heard. And the back cover here says Lady O, Lady O twice, even though it's just Lady O. So I'm not sure if that's a typo or if they did that to, I don't know why they did that. Hot Little Hands. Um, this one was not a single, but it's on the Turtle Soup album, and it's a straight-up rocker. Rollicking drums, Pete Townsend-like guitar strumming, the solos on it, the chanting vocals, loud and brash, Turtles in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. Uh, really cool to hear them rock out, especially after Lady O. You get kind of a peaceful moment, and you're blasting into a rocker. Number five, Love in the City. Uh, this is an interesting track. This did hit number 91 in 1969. The reel-to-reel -reel version of this track is about a minute longer, so this is a bit of a shorter single edit of it. But so much potential for this song to be a hit. Um, clever, charging, propulsive rhythm, soaring vocals. It could have been a top 20 hit, I think, if it was promoted correctly. But um, man, such a good song. And the way it just jams out in the end, so cool. And then Cat in the Window, which is a very, very head-scratcher of a choice here. Um, a very unusual addition. It's an unreleased song at the time, so it may have been something White Whale was doing to be like, hey, buy this album. There's an unreleased Turtle song. Buy this album. Um, really dry production um, on this track, but I do like the storytelling. It's kind of a weird little song. Um, it's cute. It's playful. Um... It's well sung. It's a well executed track, but it's very much a head scratcher. I would have put like Earth Song on here from Battle of the Bands. I think that may have been a little bit of a, a wiser choice to kind of make the album feel a little bit more whole or complete. But it's kind of nice that Cat in the Window has a home here anyway. So, recorded in 1967, I should add. But yeah, I um, I love this album. I love. The Turtles in general, but this era for them is something that I feel like it's completely overlooked. The album itself hit number 146, so it didn't do too well. It has since been reissued on vinyl. I can't tell if it's ever been released on CD, though. I've been looking all over the internet. If you know about this being on CD, let me know, because I can't find it. Um, 
After this came out, like I said, they put out the Wooden Head collection, which was all B-sides and rarities kind of stuff. And two singles were released from that. Their cover of Eve of Destruction, which hit number 100, and then Me About You, which hit number 105. But by this point, they had pretty much broken up. Um, so they were a whole different band, or they were pretty much done, I should say, by that point. But um, here's the back cover. So it says the Turtles. Some old ones and some fairly new ones. And you have the guys looking all groovy. And let me show you the, the label here. The original inner sleeve is long gone, so I'm using one of my fancy MoFi sleeves. MoFi, send me free stuff. And the classic white whale logo. So yeah, for me, it's easily a nine out of 10. Um, I like Cat in the Window, but I would have put something else in its place. So that's like my only gripe with this thing, um, which is a very minor gripe, but I mean, you know, for a greatest hits album, it's fantastic. I do think it's funny that White Whale was like, one more last hurrah, let's write Who Would Ever Think That I Would Marry Margaret as one of the, the songs that people wanna hear. But um, they do have Eleanor, You Showed Me, Lady O, She's My Girl, so they, they did write some of the big ones on there, but um, man, a very interesting group, very interesting story. <sighs> Great music, though. The Turtles, more golden hits. Nine out of ten from your boy Giggins. And that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been The Turtles, more golden hits. Let me know what you think about this album uh, in the comments below. We'll chat about it. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. And uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.